Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, we are going to discuss a very important security related point which you should keep in your mind when you are working with personally identifiable information and most of your workloads are running in cloud. Okay, and the topic is de-identification and re-identification of PII data when you are working in cloud. Okay. So what is that? Let us try to understand. So nearly every business need to store sensitive data, right? This includes customer names, email address, their home address, phone number, etc, etc. Or even highly sensitive data like credit card information. Okay. So home address is required in many cases like for Amazon, etc, etc. Where the product will be delivered to your home location, right? So that time this home address can be a very important personally identifiable information. Email address or phone number might be required for marketing purpose or to share some very important communication, right? Like just to give you some example, suppose in banking domain or in financial domain, suppose you are doing some transaction, then the information related to a particular transaction should be shared via email or phone number, right? So for that case, the system might need to store the sensitive email address or phone number. The various reasons are there, right? So although the companies are storing this kind of PII data for various purpose, but companies have many reasons to protect the customer data also for privacy purpose by restricting access to such sensitive information. Okay, it is not like any employee within that particular organization should be able to access all the customer PII information. They can misuse that. Or maybe for example, the hacker should not easily hack the system. If the hackers get all the customer information, then they can do a lot of activities, right? So those things has to be taken care of in our data pipeline design. Okay. And that's why big data engineers need to think about this particular security aspect also, especially with respect to PII security when they are designing their complex data pipeline. Okay, right. So I hope you understood the importance of storing PII and we need to parallelly protect that PII also, right. So obviously one technique to protect PII is encryption. In encryption, what happens that we are having a key and an algorithm, right. And in this process, we basically transform the plain text into a cipher text using this key and the appropriate algorithm. Like for example, suppose this is the plain text, which is an email address. If we want to store that in our system, then we will encrypt that. Okay. Now the problem with encryption is it is a reversible process. If someone get the access to the key, then using that particular algorithm from the encrypted value, the particular person can easily access the plain text value also okay so because this is reversible process so encryption is not the best possible option to store PII data right we need some better option which is not reversible and that's where come the tokenization concept so if you tokenize your data it will be irreversible process right because there is no mathematical relationship between token and the original PII so from tokens you can never get back the original data and that is basically one of the safest option to store any PII information like what we will do we will basically tokenize the PII like credit card information or customer name email address phone number etc etc and then we will store in our system if our big data pipeline is using those PIIs okay right so the architecture generally can be shown easily like this kind of diagram here we might be having our front-end application database or third-party data or streaming data using Kafka or Kinesis using this kind of systems the data is coming in near real time okay so first what we will do we will tokenize our data once we are doing tokenization we will ingest the data in our data warehouse or data lake maybe that is snowflake or maybe that is s3 whatever we are using in our company okay right so in our data warehouse whatever data is there those all are basically tokenized data no one can get back the original PII from those data. Okay. Now the business analyst or business intelligence team can do data analysis and data processing all these things on that tokenized data. Okay. Might be the customer name or the PII information will be useless for them because they are tokenized. But other important parameters will not be tokenized. Right. Like for example, suppose this particular system is for a banking system. Okay. And suppose one customer has opened a saving account. So for saving account, there is a unique identifier that if any customer has this particular product code, that means the customer is belonging to saving account. Okay. Now customer name will be tokenized. 
but the product code will not be tokenized right so from the product code at least you can understand that although for him or her all the informations are tokenized but that customer is belonging to saving account like that maybe the business is asking you how many saving account holders are there so although the customers PII are tokenized but using other fields which are not tokenized which are not PII using those you can do your data analysis or machine learning model training etc etc activity okay you will not get any blocker in the data analytics part right now there are some process where the PII information also needed like for example for marketing team suppose marketing team want to send the customer some specific communication now from the data warehouse or from the data lake if they are pulling the data all the PII are tokenized right starting from email id phone number everything now using that tokenized email id the marketing team cannot get back the original email address because tokenization process just now i told you it is nothing but an irreversible process right but they need to send the communication to the customers with respect to their latest campaign whatever they are doing or if they are launching some new product etc etc right so here you can see that there is a need of re-identification from tokenization that's why in the beginning i told you that today's topic is de-identification and re-identification of pii we did de-identification of pii just for security purpose and our data analyst business analyst everyone can work peacefully but here we can see when it comes to marketing team when they are pulling the data from data lake or data warehouse that time they need to get the actual email address or actual PII. So this time we need re-identification or the reverse process of tokenization or de-tokenization we need. Okay. Now just now I told you that tokenization is basically irreversible process. So how to get back the actual PII information from the tokenized file? That is the question now. And that process is very simple. What we will do? We will use a lookup table. Okay. So suppose we are having email address, phone number, etc., which are basically PII. End user are giving those details to our system or something. Our system has captured. Now, what our system will do to before storing that to our data warehouse or data lake, it will tokenize that. Okay. Suppose for this email address, Joe at the rate acme.com, the tokenized email address is this one. Suppose for example. Okay. Now from this email address, I can never get back the original email address. But if we are sharing this email address to marketing team, it is not at all useful for them, right? So from this one, they need to get back this. So what we will do, we will keep a very secure database system, okay? Where we'll be having a table where plain text versus tokenized value mapping will be there. So in this particular table where very few persons will be having access, okay, very restricted access will be there with highly secured policies and authentication, etc. So here what we will do, we will keep a lookup table where one column will be plain text that is the actual PII information and the another column will be the tokenized value. This kind of mapping will be there. Okay. And now suppose I am having this kind of tokenized values. Although directly using some mathematical way, I cannot get back the de-tokenized value from this tokenized one. But if I query this particular table that what is the plain text corresponding to this particular tokenized value. Then I can easily get this particular email address, which is basically PII and then marketing team can use that, right? So in most of the industries, this is what is used, okay? They are having a table in a very secure database where the plain text and token mapping is there. So the complete architecture for de-identification and re-identification of PII looks like this, okay? See, application system, we are tokenizing and then ingesting in our data warehouse or data lake. We are storing that, doing processing, business analyst team are doing a lot of analysis on that, right, etc, etc. And then when marketing team need that, what they will do, they will get the tokenized values and this particular token stored database using that particular SQL query, it will try to get all the PII information corresponding to the tokenized values, okay. And then they will get all the PII like email address, phone number, etc. And using that particular PII, they can easily do marketing, okay. This particular concept, I hope you got it. This is very important, widely followed in many industries for security purpose. So here, our business analyst team or most of the data engineering team are not even getting any access to our PII, but still their requirement is getting fulfilled. And for marketing team also, when they need PII, they can get that, okay, using this token store, right? Now, the same question can be formed in a different way. 
that many time in data engineering related interview process this question is asked that many financial companies don't prefer to store any data in cloud system they prefer to store something in on prem but as we know in on prem system computation can be very slow like in cloud system we are having auto scaling property and cloud manages many servers etc etc but in on prem system we might not have that much scalability or dependency okay so we need that cloud system also but the same level of security should be maintained in cloud what we are getting in on prem system but we need to use the compute part of cloud parallelly so how will we do so that time we can frame the answer like this way that what we will do in our on prem system we will tokenize that and we will ingest only tokenized value in our data warehouse system like in s3 might be the data is stored now the data engineering team can use several services like blue emr athena etc etc for data processing and business analysis okay and then if the marketing team again need some pii data they want to get back then using token store which is obviously sitting in on prem system from there they can get back the pii information they can pull all the tokenized value from data lake or cloud system and from on prem system they can map and then get back the pii okay so combination of on prem and cloud system we are using for security purpose in the cloud we are not at all sending any pii related to a customer in cloud whatever data is available everything is tokenized in on prem system only detokenized values are available which only used by marketing team or some specific member who need that pii really okay and that way here in this particular architecture we can leverage the power of cloud for computation and we can leverage the power of on prem for security purpose okay so i hope you understood this this is all for my this video if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos thank you